Every rainy season, Nigeria experiences flooding. If you look at data from 1985 up to now, every year we experience a form of flooding in parts of Nigeria. This year alone, we have recorded over 300 deaths and counting due to floods, and thousands and thousands of people have been displaced due to flooding. But do you know that the government sets us up for flooding every year? You might be wondering how. Well, sit back and watch this video and you'll find out how. Hello, I'm Joanna Kajuna reporting for GT on hashtag sustainable any day. <laughs> Here we talk about environmental sustainability, especially from a Nigerian point of view. In today's, today's video, we're going to be talking about flooding in Nigeria and how the government set us up for flooding and how they just don't care about it. The flooding that disturbs us mostly in Nigeria is rainfall flooding and we know it is a natural disaster. We do not have control over the rains. That's okay. But also flooding is tied to climate change because due to climate change, sea levels are rising and that means that the more rains we have, the more we are subject to flooding, especially coastal cities or cities that are close to coastal cities. But you know that flooding is one of those few natural disasters that could be controlled if the right thing is done. In the year 2012, Nigeria experienced one of the worst flooding it has ever experienced in its, in its history. There were losses worth up to $16.9 billion. And that, you would think, okay, that was the worst. But then you know that 10 years after, its younger brother or even its older brother was coming because the flooding that we're experiencing currently in Nigeria you choke. This is October 2022. Already 27 states in Nigeria are experiencing flooding. If you don't know, Nigeria has 36 states, including a federal capital. That's 37 states. And out of those 37, 27 of those states have experienced flooding this year. Just leave it a lucky 10 few states that have not experienced flooding this year. But you think that since Nigeria experiences this flooding every year, there's supposed to be like real mitigation, real strategy towards managing this flood. Well, there's nothing like that. The government just sits back and waits for when the flood to come and then they go about doing some, they go about give dashi people some few relief materials and taking a few pictures and they a little press, talking to the press, like line meetings here and there. But they're the ones that are causing this flood to happen to you and destroying things the way that it is destroying year after year. Now you are wondering how are they the ones setting you up for flooding? After all, it's the rain that is falling. Also, for this year's episodes of the flood, they say it's due to the overflowing of the Lagbo Dam in Cameroon. That is all true. But, but let me tell you how the government are involved. Flooding in Nigeria is mostly human induced, and that is due to our activities as humans and Nigerians. We have coconut head. Some of the ways that we Nigerians contribute to flooding include poor drainage systems or no even drainage systems in, in Nigeria, poor waste disposal methods. People train their waste into the few drainage systems that we have around, poor urbanization laws. Everybody is just coming out to make money without. Everyone is just coming out to make money, damning the consequences. Urbanization, the more that everywhere is urbanized and everyone is putting interlocking tiles and putting concrete on their floors, the rainwater cannot be absorbed into the soil. Now, these are some of the ways that we with our coconut head are contributing to flooding in Nigeria. But, but the government are the ones that are really, really setting us up for floods. And here's how. Firstly, there is no flood management policy in Nigeria. There is no legal framework given to like controlling and managing floods before floods even happen. There is nothing like that in Nigeria. Secondly, our government, like most of the things that affect us in Nigeria, they are not concerned about tackling a situation. They are more concerned about what to do after the situation has happened. And that is also the case with the floods. They are more involved, they are more interested in how to give you a few relief materials and just tell you sorry and talk with your mouth and that's all. Also, there is no effective national warning system in Nigeria. NEMA and the Meteorological National Meteorological Agency, yes, will ha they have departments that are in charge of making sure that they send out warnings and all. But according to the DG of the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, they have sent out warnings to governments, to state governments, to ministries, but nothing was done. So that also goes back to the point that 
they don't care they are more they are more interested in what to do after the thing has happened than helping you make sure that it's not as bad as it is now they're not interested in helping you soften the landing they are just waiting for the thing to hit you bam like oh we're sorry but that's all hypocritical because they had the they had the resources to be able to soften the blow on you and every other nigerian that has been affected by these floods why should they be care firstly this year's floods alone has killed over 300 people and counting and over 300 people and counting and that is we don't even know the exact number because records are not properly kept in nigeria we are just estimating over 300 people and counting thousands of people have been displaced from their homes and a lot of people are homeless right now due to the flood this year secondly the biggest rice farm in nigeria all our farms in Nasurawa is submerged in water over 4,000 hectares of rice farm underwater they are, they, they are not even sure of the damages yet till the water has dried up food security in the mud a lot of food, a lot a lot of farms a lot of farm crops have been washed away by this flood that means next year we do not know how food security is going to be for us it's because a lot of farms have been washed away a lot of farm produce a lot of crops have been washed away and the rainy season is the peak of farming in nigeria and if the floods have washed away all the food crops or if the floods have washed away most of the food crops how we how are we going to survive when it comes to food produce next year we don't know and the reason why they should care is that the Abuja local jail road has been on, on lockdown for days turning to weeks and this is due to the flood the flood has covered up the road and cars cannot pass trucks cannot pass four tankers cannot pass and this road is a major road linking northern nigeria and southern nigeria and with this road being on lockdown the other available roads are not the best routes that you could take and that and because of this lockdown on the road four tankers have not been able to move causing false scarcity in some states in the north and this is all due to the floods even businesses that have to rely on traveling between the north and the southern Nigeria, a lot of them have been on standstill because their produce or because their supplies have not been able to reach them or reach them on time. Another reason also why they should care is because flood stalls development and even destroys the few development that we have. Now imagine these roads now are covered up by water, houses are covered up by water, farms food produce all washed away from this flood is only going to stall our development so now what next the truth of the matter is the government knows what to do they do they are not dumb they have access to the information they have access to first class high grade information more than the average nigerian more than we their followers they have access to the best of the information but they just don't care they don't want to use them because the more pressing things to them is stuffing their pockets and stealing money that their grandchildren cannot even finish spending. A detriment of we, the everyday Nigerians. They are not ready to put in the policies, the strategies to make sure that the damage is not this much. They are not ready. Even when they blamed the Lagdo Dam in Cameroon due to the dam overflowing and then due to the dam overflowing and then causing floods in most of north central nigeria what have they done to call out the cameroonian government what have they done to make the cameroonian government accountable for the losses and damage that this floods that these floods have caused and even when they say these floods are also partly linked to climate change what have they done to put in climate mitigation strategies what have they done to put in policies to protect the people against effects of climate change like flooding and other effects that are coming in what are they doing what have they done almost nothing it's all talk and no work to show for it what can you do you can do something to make sure that the government do not hold your future at you can do something to make sure that the government do not hold your future to ransom and how can you do so elections are just coming around the corner 
all the aspirants that are coming around saying they want to do this either at the federal level state level or the legislative levels what are they promising you what are their body languages are what what can they show for what they are aiming to do what are their past records what have they done what point what point of leadership have they held before and what have they done when they were given a small post of leadership where they were given a small point where they were given some form of leadership in the past what have they done what have they done to effect changes in the life of the people what have they done to make sure that the people's plight and the people's that the people's plights matter more than their own selfish desires are they taking environmental issues seriously or is, or is it they want to build roads for you that has taken center stage again we do not take care of the environment as we have seen with the floods in this as we have seen with the floods in nigeria is only going to keep on taking more from us our means of livelihood will be taken away from us losses and damages will only continue to double and triple if we do not take the environment if we do not take environmental issues seriously what are these aspirants talking what are these aspirants doing or talking about environmental issues is it only going to be business as usual and then we do rinse and repeat and wait for more havoc that the floods are going to cause next year you can do something to make sure that only the people that are going to put your interests first get into these offices by voting right and leaving religious and tribal sentiments aside to make sure that you vote the people that are going to only take us to better height they're only going to make sure that they're only going to take us to better height and ensure that we have the best and nothing else because we all deserve the best if you've watched this video up to now, thank you very much. And if you're a Nigerian, I hope that you have your PVC and you are getting ready to vote at the 2023 elections. Don't forget to like this video and share it to people that you feel would benefit from this video. Until, very, until next time, remember that you can be the change that you want to see. Joan of Kaduna, signing out.